great homecoming for the man sitting right to my right, a longtime friend, one of the great guitar players of all time, the legendary Ace Frehley. What's up, buddy? How you doing, my brother? I'm good, I'm good. It's gotta be feel, feel good to be back out there on the road again. Yeah, it, it, felt, it feels real good. You know, We actually had so much fun on this tour, it should be illegal. <laughs> Well, it's really nice doing it sober, because I don't have to deal with hangovers the next day. And it's nice remembering what I did the night before. Everybody tells me I'm playing better, you know, than I played in years. And, uh, Singing better? It feels great. Singing better, yeah. What's the biggest reaction from the audience? Uh, what, what are you hearing from the fans about well, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm really enjoying is the fact I'm really not focused on a show like KISS always has been. And the focus is more on the music. And people talk about the music and they talk about, you know, how we're performing and how we're tight we're playing. And uh, I mean, you know, the smoking guitar and the light guitar and rockets and all that stuff is great. But, you know, it's not the focus, you know, as, you know, I remember, you know, touring with KISS. A lot of times I'd read a review the, the following day and it would be about, you know, the show was amazing and they had this and that happened. You know, but and sometimes they even really didn't mention much about the music. And now it's the music first and the show second, which is the way it should be. You made a, a solo album in 1978 when you were still a member of KISS, which is regarded as one of the great records. And it had such a huge single that still is played at sporting events all over the place to this day. Of course, New York Groove. That album now, that 78 album, is, is 30 years old. Can you believe how well it's held up and still how those songs are such highlights in your live show? Most people cite that as their favorite Ace Frehley record. Um, actually, a friend of mine from San Francisco said I should do a concert of just and perform that whole album and make it a special event. And, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do it in the fall, who knows? The song New York Groove, what's happened with that song? Could you ever have imagined when you recorded that 30 years ago that here we would be and that song is probably bigger than it's ever been? Any stories you can give us from the recording of that back in 78 and did you ever envision it would be? I wasn't really that excited about the song initially because I just didn't think it was very indicative of my sound. You know, but Eddie Kramer kind of pushed me in the direction and uh, we ended up, you know, doing an interesting version of it that, uh, you know, most people thought, I think I wrote that song, but it was actually written by Russ Ballard. So, uh, but I mean, I'm really happy with it. Let me ask you about, in particular, Madison Square Garden and all the times that you've played there, of course, as a member of KISS. I imagine the very first time must have been pretty memorable for you, right? That was memorable. The first time I sang Shock Me, which is my first lead vocal ever live, was at Madison Square Garden. And, you know, I think the last time we played there, we did three nights. That was kind of special, too. So, you know, there's different segments of my career always seems to revolve around, you know, Madison Square Garden, special events there. Let's see you at the Garden again real soon oh, yeah. these days, right? Maybe after the CD comes out. All right, sounds good. Thank <laughs> you, buddy. Rock and roll.